Hello and welcome to the fourth in my series looking at ICAO's articles. In this video we will have a look at articles 31 to 40 and how they impact aviation. In article 31 ICAO requires that any aircraft operating internationally have to have a valid certificate of airworthiness supplied by the state that the aircraft is registered in. Article 32 covers crew licensing. Pilots and flight crew operating internationally need to have licenses issued by the state the aircraft is registered in. In practice, there are some interesting cases such as with EASA where licenses are common across all member states. Additionally, this also means that aircraft can be flown in a state you don't have a valid pilot's license in if you have an aircraft registered in your state available to fly. States also reserve the right to refuse to recognise licences and certificates of competency of its own citizens if the licences were granted by another state. Article 33 ensures that certificates of airworthiness and flight crew licences are recognised by other states as long as the issuing state meets ICAO standards. All aircraft on international operations shall keep a journey logbook. The ICAO article is fairly vague on the contents, though ICAO Annex 6 Part 1 provides some more concrete detail on the required information. I won't cover this here, but likely will in a future video. Article 35 is concerned with giving states the ability to restrict the cargo that is carried through their airspace. In particular, weapons or other munitions may only be carried with prior permission. Don't forget that this only concerns civil aircraft, as state aircraft already require permission to fly internationally anyway. A state may prohibit any item of cargo from being carried through their airspace for reasons of public order or safety. ICAO member states may prohibit or regulate the use of photographic apparatus in aircraft over its territory. This ensures that aircraft are able to prevent other states from using civil aircraft to perform military reconnaissance. Article 37 introduces ICAO's standard and recommended practices. These are published as annexes to the Chicago Convention, as previously mentioned. They're not as legally binding as the Convention itself, but ICAO do audit states based on these. We will be covering the SARPs in more detail after we've finished reviewing the articles of the Convention. There are 18 topics though, uh, soon to be 19, uh, many of which are now shown on screen. Article 38 covers the required actions if a state is unable to comply with one or more ICAO standards. Any state that can't comply with an ICAO standard or procedure shall notify the Council within 60 days of the discrepancy commencing. ICAO will then immediately notify all other states of the nature of the discrepancy. Article 39 looks at certificates for both aircraft and flight crew. If there are any failures to meet certification requirements at the time of certification, details of any failures should be listed on the certification. For example, the ICAO agreed maximum flight crew age is 65. However, a person could fly beyond this age if the states involved authorised it, but this would be noted on the personnel licensing as it would not be meeting international standards. Article 40 covers the validity of certificates and licences internationally. Aircraft and flight crew that are suitably licensed may only operate internationally with the permission of the states whose territory would be entered. Additionally, it is at the discretion of other states as to whether a certified aircraft or aircraft part may enter them. As always, if you have any comments or corrections, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.